Hey, yo, folks, my name is Axel, and it's November, which means it's time to start thinking about Christmas. Not really. Shut the f- <laughs> And I don't know about you, but for me, Christmas means a few things. The Christmas sweaters are back in style, the mediocre cookies are in the oven, mmm, they taste the way a puddle smells. And above all else, it's time to start thinking about all the amazing products that publishers save till the end of the year so they can make an exorbitant amount of money off of games people would have bought anyway. To be perfectly fair, it's understandable why publishers save stuff till the end of the year, especially with video games. With Black Friday happening at this point of the year, game publishers want to send out titles that not only push a lot of copies, but also push a lot of consoles that the games are on. Holiday titles are an important business strategy in the gaming world, so with it being the holiday season, I thought it only appropriate to take a look at some notable examples of holiday titles throughout the year and rate them on a scale of 1 to 5 yeses. What I consider to be a holiday title is a big AAA game that is released within the last three months of the year. And also I'm going to start with the fifth generation of video game consoles. I mean, I could probably talk about each generation before, but I mean, what is there really to say? Ooh, Pong came out in the Magnavox Odyssey. Am I interesting yet? And of course, this is only my personal opinion. The fifth generation of video game consoles, and this one was a barren one in my opinion. This was the generation of the N64 and the original PlayStation, but I'm gonna stick to Nintendo consoles because that's what I know best. The N64 did the whole existence thing from 1996 to 2003, and you can tell that holiday titles were not as big a deal back then as they are now. What I find notable is the release of Bombman 64, released on November 30th, 1997, Banjo-Tooie that came out on November 20th, 2000, Castlevania on November 30th, 1999, Diddy Kong Racing that was released on November 24th, 1997, Majora's Mask on October 26, 2000, and The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time on November 21st, 1998. <laughs> I mean, these games are good, definitely that, but none of these games seem like very big system sellers to me, aside from Ocarina of Time, of course. These games are definitely good holiday titles, but it doesn't seem to me like they were released with the intention of being holiday titles, just that their release schedule lined up with it. Ocarina of Time and Banjo-Tooie are definitely good games, and they definitely sold consoles, but... I mean, did they even set the games out at this time with the intention of them selling the consoles? I'm not sure. Good games, but not necessarily holiday titles in my opinion. The sixth generation of video game consoles was the GameCube, and that existed from 2001 to 2007. In my opinion, this is where holiday titles started to get real-eyed. Oh, cool. But at the same time, not necessarily taken seriously, just that it was realized that it was an important thing. I'm sad now. What I find notable is Call of Duty Final Sour on November 16, 2004, Fire Emblem Path of Radiance on October 17, 2005, Metroid Prime on November 17, 2002, Mario Party 4 through 7 that was released at the tail end of the year from 2002 to 2005, Super Smash Bros. Melee that was released on November 17, 2001, Sonic Mega Collection that was released on November 10th, 2002, and of course, Dora the Explorer Journey to the Purple Planet on October 13th, 2005. Oh, and then there's Wind Waker, but hey, who cares? Do you care? I mean, I don't care. Here's my not caring face. Like I said, they obviously knew that holiday titles were important at this point, but not by much. These are obviously hard-hitting titles, they definitely sold copies. But then again, if I saw these games in a store, they wouldn't necessarily pique my interest enough to buy a GameCube. In my opinion, party games are great as holiday titles. They are multiplayer games that are easily accessible and provide lots of fun. Wind Waker was an awesome game, but that wasn't exactly popular at the time this game came out. People didn't really like the more cartoony style of the Wind Waker, especially after Nintendo teased a more mature style when the game was first announced. And then there's Sonic Mega Collection. A great collection, definitely, but is exactly that, a collection. These games are available on other platforms. Why would you buy a GameCube to then play games that you can play on previous consoles? Honestly, Dora is the only thing that saved this generation, in my opinion. Now we're on to the Wii, my own personal childhood console. Of course I played a lot of GameCube games in the past, but my early years were mostly spent with this thing. Now you might ask yourself, does my nostalgia for this console cloud my judgment? 
We launched in 2006 and had a seven year lifespan. And oh boy, this was a good one. Wii Sports, Twilight Princess, Super Mario Strikers, Super Mario Galaxy, Animal Crossing, City Folk, Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, New Super Mario Bros. Wii, Kirby's Epic Yarn, Donkey Kong Country Returns, Legend of Zelda, Skyward Sword. Ah! This is why you're my favorite. You get back in the basement. Now, some people might see this lineup and say, eh, this is a bit vanilla for me. There isn't much third party here, not much variety, and I'd argue that, bitch, that's the point. This is what a holiday title is. It's taking a big franchise that is exclusive to your console and making a new game in that series exclusive to your console so that it attracts people to your console. The seventh generation was by far my favorite generation for holiday titles. It not only felt like Nintendo was doing a better job at advertising their series, but they were straight up flaunting them at this point. And I love it. I love everything about it. So the 8th generation is a bit of a weird one, seeing how this is the generation that Nintendo sent out two consoles. Originally they were only going to have the Wii U this generation and save the Switch for the 9th generation, but then the Wii U did the whole Wii U thing and they had to jump on the Switch in order to survive. And at the time of making this video, the Switch is still, you know, doing its thing. So this is a bit weird for me. Do I judge a generation based on consoles that have libraries that aren't technically finished yet? For the sake of simplicity, I will only judge this generation based on Wii U holiday titles. Oh, that's not good. The Wii U was Nintendo's 8th generation console and their first HD console, and it flopped. Like, the Wii U flopped hard. You can still find these things on eBay for dirt cheap even today. But maybe the fact that the Wii U wasn't doing so well worked in Nintendo's favor. Maybe the fact that they needed to sell more Wii U's convinced them that they need to make really good holiday titles in order to push the console's success. What if they did that? Do you think they did that? Well, the Wii U definitely had some interesting holiday titles, and they are as followed. Super Mario 3D World on November 21st, 2013. The sentence is over. That's it. That's the biggest holiday title of this generation. Don't get me wrong, Nintendo definitely released things this generation, but most of the stuff Nintendo released this generation were along the lines of ports, games that were available on other consoles, and bad. My god, this is just disappointing. You can definitely tell that Nintendo was pointing their attention towards the Switch halfway through the Wii U's life. great. As I said at the beginning of the episode about holiday titles being an important business strategy is something I wrote before I even did the research for this video. Because I believed that at the time. But after seeing how Nintendo handles holiday titles, it just makes me feel like it's not really as big a deal as I thought it was. Something I find interesting definitely is that during the holidays, Nintendo will release very good holiday titles but they'll seem to only do it on their successful consoles rather than their consoles that are doing poorly where the idea of a holiday title would benefit them much more. And I just find that kind of confusing. Now I'm not saying that Nintendo is bad at marketing or bad at selling their consoles. I'm just heavily implying it.